serious about space, so is Volkswagen's Caravelle. In contrast to the largest conventional MPVs on the market, it'll not only take seven people, but all their luggage too, thanks to commercial origins refined by decades of development that have created a quality car-like feel for driver and passengers alike. Ultimately, there isn't much that can do what a Caravelle can. The Volkswagen Caravelle. It is in every way the definitive extra-large people carrier, the latest instalment in over half a century of history that has seen this vehicle and its predecessors share and change the lives of countless families in almost every country of the world. Such a simple concept, you'd think. A windowed van for people rather than packages. But then the best ideas always are. This one came from a Dutch vehicle importer called Ben Pon, who just after World War II spotted workers at Volkswagen's Wolfsburg factory using a stripped down beetle to move parts around. Inspired, he sketched out a platform for a versatile commercial vehicle that would be brilliant for business and with seats and windows, fine for families too. Following the 1950 launch, it was the seated versions that most captured the public's imagination, early versions of which were known by a whole variety of names. The Samba Bus, the Combi, the Microbus, or even in the swinging 60s, the Hippie Bus. In America, it was simpler. A people carrying transporter was just known as a Volkswagen Bus. These vehicles offered simple, utilitarian people transport, but by the time the third generation T3 transporter model was introduced in 1980, Volkswagen thought it had identified an extra market amongst buyers who liked the size and versatility, but wanted to move their passengers around in more car-like surroundings. So was born the Caravelle. The version we have today is based on the fifth generation T5 transporter series first introduced back in 2003 and is of course a far cry from the crude but characterful original buses. Fully car-like qualities though only arrived with the 2010 introduction of the facelifted version that we're going to look at here, a model which belatedly dispensed with noisy, inefficient direct injection diesel engines in favour of a quieter modern common rail power. The result in this guise can be almost anything you want. A huge family runabout, an upmarket taxi, or even, as here, a business limousine. Let's put it to the test. So, you'll want to know whether it drives like a, a car-like MPV or a van-like minibus. Let's get that out of the way right up front. The on-road experience is actually somewhere between the two, though your reaction might be more positive than that if you're not up to speed with just how dynamically adept the latest generation of large vans really are. The feeling you get at the wheel of this one varies a little, of course, depending on whether it's fully loaded with passengers, a state in which both ride and composure are much improved. If there's no one in your caravel but you, you're probably more likely to notice the vague power steering and the slightly lumpy low-speed ride. And, of course, the high-sided shape and 2.5-ton curb weight don't take particularly kindly to sharp, high-speed cornering antics. Better, of course, to settle back and use this vehicle as intended, wafting around on the potent wave of torque delivered by the common rail four-cylinder, two-litre TDI diesel engines that replaced their wheezy old five-cylinder direct injection predecessors in 2010 and have since been staple fare for all Volkswagen buyers. There are two on offer here, base models being powered by a single turbo 140 PS unit, putting out 340 Newton meters of torque, enough to get this sizable chunk of German real estate to 62 miles an hour in 14.2 seconds, on the way to a top speed of 107 miles an hour. Here though, I've opted for the more modern and efficient 180 PS BI TDI twin turbo version of this unit. At low engine speeds, the largest of the two BI TDI blowers delivers steady charge, but go a bit faster, and there's a second, smaller turbocharger, ready to cut in and give additional boost. 
At first glance, the stats don't seem much affected. The 0 to 62 miles an hour time improves fractionally to 11.4 seconds and the top speed to 119 miles an hour. But what's much more important is the jump in torque, up to 400 newton meters, enough to give this heavy vehicle a real shove forward, especially when accelerating from low speeds. Something you'll particularly appreciate when you're driving fully laden or and up sharper slopes or when towing. All caravels can tow a brake trailer of up to 2,500 kilograms. In town you'll find this vehicle easier to manoeuvre than you might expect something of this size to be. That's partly due to the excellent all-round visibility and raised driving position and a flat vertical rear that makes it easy uh, to judge when to stop when reversing. It's also down to the relatively tight turning circle, 11.9 meters for the short wheelbase model and 13.2 meters for the long wheelbase version. Urban bound users will probably uh, prefer to pay extra for the 7 speed DSG auto transmission that I have here, as will most other Caravelle buyers if they can afford it. Not that there's much wrong with the reasonably slick shifting 6 speed manual box, it's just that this high tech twin clutch auto suits the laid back cruising character of this car so much better, managing its butter smooth changes with only minimal impacts on efficiency and performance. A less popular option is that for four motion four wheel drive, offering extra peace of mind on slippery surfaces and available with manual or auto transmission with either engine. This is one of those systems that uses a Haldex coupling to channel power to the wheels with most grip. So while in normal driving 90% of torque will be directed frontwards, should a loss of traction be detected, up to 100% of forward motion can, if necessary, be diverted to the rear. There's something a little more upmarket about a Caravelle, a class and quality that marks it out from mainstream brand rivals. After all, you can't imagine a chairman of the board being prepared to cruise about in a rival Ford Tourneo Custom or Hyundai i800, however much leather and burr walnut it had inside it. But this Volkswagen can and does mix it in limousine circles, sliding seamlessly amongst the finest four doors of the corporately wealthy. Only Mercedes Viano can match it in this respect, and that's a smaller but pricier proposition. I'm talking here of this business edition variant, but even more ordinary caravels look smartly self-assured. The van-derived origins are partly disguised by the clear horizontal lines and chrome trim of frontal styling designed to replicate that used across Volkswagen's passenger car lineup. The headlights and grille merge within a single bar running across the front end, with the grille section split by these chrome slats. There's another chrome separator in the air intake that's been carved into the bumper and the whole thing set off by beady-eyed cornering fog lamps and an aerodynamic set of wing mirrors. Now, there's nothing remotely fashionable on offer here, but it's all quietly classy in its own restrained way. But of course, what matters is what you'll find inside. It would, of course, have been quite possible in something this big. This short wheelbase version is nearly five meters long and nearly two meters wide to shoehorn in eight or nine seats as rival models from Ford and Hyundai do. As indeed Volkswagen also does in the transporter shuttle and transporter window van minibus versions of this design. But then that would have created a minibus feel, which is precisely what most Caravelle owners don't want. In fact, some don't even want seven seats. Power open the sliding side door on this top business version and you'll find a strict six seater with three pairs of single chairs that allow you to really stretch out. Assuming that you're not a CEO though, you'll probably prefer to opt for a much more affordable and more practical SE or executive spec Caravelle. Though if you really want, these can be specified with the six chair arrangement I have here. Most owners are gonna need what for Volkswagen at least is a more conventional rear seating layout. That means a three person rear bench here right at the very back and two single chairs in the middle 
that will usually be turned to face the bench at the back so that passengers can talk directly to each other rather than to the back of people's heads. The front seats can optionally be specified so that they turn to face those at the rear too. And base models have a natty multifunction table that clips in and out of these rails on the floor and sits between second and third rows. Customers of this business model get a more sophisticated setup uh, with this lovely refrigerated burr walnut centre console uh, and this versatile tabletop that can, if required, be turned through 90 degrees and lowered into the base. Whether the plan is for an impromptu business meeting on the M1 or it's just about keeping the kids quiet on the way to your weekend holiday cottage. These are features that really do make a huge difference to the way this car can be used. Versatility further aided by these four floor mounted rails. Now these enable the various rear seats to slide into just about any position you want, depending on the vehicle application you have in mind and the amount of people carrying or packaging space you're likely to need. You'll have a lot more flexibility when it comes to doing that if on the two lower spec versions you opt for the long wheelbase guys that isn't available to buyers of this business edition. This adds another 400 millimeters to the length and offers owners a bit more scope when it comes to repositioning the seats about. Not in itself an especially easy job such as their individual weight and bulk. I certainly want to be in the long wheelbase body style if I was planning to spend the night in my caravel. Yes, you can do that too. The rearmost bench is easily converted into a large, almost completely flat bed by putting a lever and pushing the recliner back and down. An optional sleep pack offers a rear seat bed extension and window blinds. And luggage space? Well, this is where a super large people carrier like this comes into its own. With a conventional car-like large MPV, if all seven seats are occupied, it's unlikely you'll also have enough space for everyone's luggage. With a Caravelle, it's different. Once you've negotiated the lifting of this huge rear tailgate, and that's something you'll need to have left plenty of space behind the vehicle in order to be able to raise, the cargo capacity with all the seats in use is about double the amount that you get in a similar scenario with a large MPV like, say, Volkswagen's own Charan. What I can tell you is that with all second and third row seating taken out, it's absolutely enormous in here with either 5,800 or 6,700 litres of total capacity, depending on your choice between short or long wheelbase body styles. Now that may be just a touch less than you get in a comparable Ford Tornio Custom, but it's significantly more than even the biggest extra long version of the rival Mercedes Viano can offer. And at the wheel? Well, you certainly sit high up to the point where there's a feeling of sitting on top of the car rather than in it, but it's certainly a commanding perch with excellent all-round visibility. Though not to the point where I'd consider doing without the, unfortunately optional on base models, front and rear parking sensors. Volkswagen's design team have done what they can to tone down the dashboard's commercial vehicle origins with uh, leather steering wheel trim, smartly white backlit dials and this colour touchscreen sat nav setup on top models. Overall though, it is what it is. No soft touch plastics or chrome trimmed frippery here and much of the switchgear is sourced from older generation Golfs. Still, some of the van derived stuff is actually quite welcome. The dash mounted gear lever for example or the twin cup holders that fold out from the fascia and it's certainly very practical with features like these properly sized door pockets that take large drink bottles. All seems built to last too. You'll be buying a Caravelle because you want a lot of space. So given that you'll already be shelling out somewhere in the region of 35 to 45,000 pounds for typical SE or executive models, it makes sense to find another 1,000 pounds on top of the price of your chosen derivative and make the jump from short to long wheelbase body style. 
One derivative that won't give you that option is the short wheelbase only six seater business version I've got here, kitted out like a luxury limousine and priced to match in the 65 to 70,000 pound bracket. As you'd expect, that outlay gets you the top BI TDI 180 PS diesel engine mated to DSG auto transmission. Choosing those two options on lesser caravels requires a premium, of course. So you'll pay an extra couple of thousand to go from TDI 140 to BI TDI 180 diesel power and an 1800 pound premium to upgrade from a six speed manual gearbox to the seven speed DSG auto transmission. And just to complete the picture, if you're ordering either engine or either gearbox in short wheelbase form and likely to be venturing over slippery surfaces, there's the £2,800 premium of four motion four wheel drive. Those then are the Caravelle facts, but I need to put them into some kind of perspective and try and give you some idea as to why you should consider buying this car rather than the kind of conventional and more car-like large seven-seat people carrier that would cost you much less, around £10,000 less in the case of Volkswagen's own Chiran, fitted with exactly the same 2.0-litre TDI 140 engine. Essentially, it all comes down to space for both people and packages. Take all the rear passenger seats out of a Chiran and you'll find around 2,267 litres on offer, a lot, but less than half what you get even in a short wheelbase Caravelle. Such are the benefits of working with a van based design. You might expect that such enormous capacity would get you more than seven seats, but no, that's the top limit for Caravelle folk. This basic shape will take more chairs, of course. You can have eight or nine seats if you go for the minibus version of Volkswagen's transporter van. It's called the transporter shuttle, a vehicle that's essentially the same design, but far more basically trimmed, and a model that, when fitted with the same engines, would save you between three and five thousand pounds, depending on spec. But in practice, such a utilitarian option is only suitable for schools, clubs and airport taxi operators. I'm going to assume here that you want something properly car-like that's a step up from an ordinary large MPV in terms of people and luggage capacity, but isn't a full, fully-fledged bus. Apart from Volkswagen, three other brands have taken van-based minibus designs and recreated them as spacious passenger cars. First up are a couple of mainstream manufacturer products, Ford's transit-based Tornio Custom and Hyundai's iLoad-based i800 model. Now these don't have the quality cachet of a Caravelle, but are over £10,000 less expensive and can seat at least eight people, or up to nine in the case of the Ford. It's more likely though, if you're looking at this Volkswagen, that you want something a little nicer than a converted transit or South Korean van, even a very plushly specified one. In which case, I'd suggest that there's only one alternative to a Caravelle. It's called the Mercedes Viano and it's based on the brand's Vito van, but there are a couple of drawbacks with it. First, to get anywhere near the space you'd get even in a short wheelbase Caravelle, you'd need to order a Viano in its biggest extra long guise, and even then you get 20% less room to play with. Second, in that guise, you'd be looking at shelling out around two and a half thousand pounds more than you'd have to find for a comparable Caravelle. So there it is. Essentially what we have here is a vehicle pretty unique in its own way. If you agree, then for the required outlay, you're going to be expecting a pretty complete specification, and by and large, you shouldn't be disappointed. I'd admit, for this kind of money, I was surprised to find things like parking sensors, Bluetooth phone compatibility, a digital radio, power folding mirrors, and a multifunction steering wheel on the options list for baseline models. But otherwise, whichever 2 litre TDI Caravelle variant you choose, 140, or as in this case, 180 PS, manual or automatic, two or four wheel drive, you'll find it to be pretty well kitted out. So, all versions get alloy wheels, sliding side doors on both sides, front fog lights that light your way around corners, climatic air conditioning, an eight speaker CD stereo, a trip computer, 
a neat multifunction rear table, three 12 volt power sockets, some blinds on all rear windows, and a hill holder clutch to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Plusher versions get things like rear privacy glass, uh, power sliding doors, cruise control, and three zone specific climate control. Stretch meanwhile to this top six seater only business version and you really will be traveling in limousine like style with burr walnut trim, full Nappa leather seats, a bigger multifunction table and color touchscreen satellite navigation. As for options, well, family buyers might like to look at the tailgate bike rack or the integrated child seats, these being bolster cushions that fold out of the seat bases. And more adventurous types might even want the sleep pack that includes everything you'd need for a peaceful night. A bed extension for the seats when folded down, a mattress cover for the fabric, and even window curtains. There's the option of a separate parking heater as well with its own battery and remote control. Of course, this is just for occasional overnight use. Regular campers will be looking at the proper California version of this same vehicle, a variant that model for model will only cost you around 1,500 pounds more than a Caravelle in its most basic form, but does have the disadvantage of only being able to seat four people when on the move. As for safety, well, all Caravelles come with Isofix child seat fastenings in the middle row and on the two outer seats on the rearmost bench. There are also twin front and curtain airbags, plus traction control and anti-lock brakes with brake assist to help in emergency stops. Uh, those will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. There's also a high-tech ESP stability control system that'll keep the brake discs dry in wet conditions, offer brake fade support and active rollover protection, plus a trailer stabilisation setup to prevent snaking when and if you're towing. Now the major step forward with this T5 generation Caravelle came with the introduction of this facelifted version in 2010 and its move away from the old 2.5 litre direct injection five cylinder diesel engine. Instead, buyers were at last treated to the kind of smaller, more efficient four cylinder common rail diesel units that had long been used in Volkswagen's passenger car range. So, this Caravelle model lineup starts with the single turbo 2 litre TDI 140 PS power plant, which manages 36.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 203 grams per kilometre of CO2. Specified with DSG auto transmission, those returns are only slightly affected, falling marginally to 34.4 miles to the gallon and 216 grams per kilometre. For both models, that means rating in the band K tax bracket. Here though, I've chosen a variant powered by the Pokia Biturbo 2 litre TDI that uses its twin blowers not only to boost power to 180 PS, but also to improve efficiency. So this particular Caravelle is actually a little cheaper to run than the entry level version, managing 37.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and putting out 199 grams per kilometre of CO2. Here I'm using uh, this engine in concert with the 7-speed DSG Auto gearbox, in which form the returns are uh, 35.8 miles to the gallon and 208 grams per kilometre. With both engines, the figures I've quoted are for two-wheel drive models, but opt for the four-motion four-wheel drive setup and your running costs will only be fractionally affected. What's likely to have far more impact on these figures is how heavily loaded your vehicle is. Weigh your caravel down with people and luggage and mid-twenties economy figures are far more realistic. To keep maintenance costs in check, Volkswagen offers the option of a long life servicing regime that, in the case of the TDI 140 model, can extend your service intervals from as little as 9,000 miles or every year to as much as 25,000 or every two years. For this program, you'll need special long life oil, which protects for up to three times the distance of standard lubricants, but costs three times as much. 
your call. At least when your caravel does get up on the ramps, it should require less labour time thanks to various engineering tweaks made to this facelifted T5 version. Take the timing belt, which previously in some variants had to be changed as frequently as every 78,000 miles. These days that figure has almost doubled to 130,000 miles. What else? There's a gear shift indicator on the dash to promote efficient driving and you get a three year 100,000 mile warranty. There's also a 12 year anti-corrosion guarantee, a three year paintwork warranty and three years of roadside assistance. Finally, insurance groupings are pitched at 26 for the entry-level TDI 140, 31 to 32 for the BI TDI 180 and 38 to 39 for this plush business limousine model. So how ultimately ought we to define the Volkswagen Caravelle? You might have started off seeing it as some kind of LCV, a perfectly reasonable assumption given that it's based on a Volkswagen Transporter panel van and sold through Volkswagen van centres. But it's got seven seats, so you could also finger it as some kind of minibus until you clamber inside and discover that those chairs slide, fold and rotate, just like an MPV. But it's also more than that too. It's armchair style seats and superior trim materials, making it quite upmarket for the kids and more perhaps like an executive limousine. But Let's stop this. What we know for sure is that since it was improved with the most recent enhancements made to Volkswagen's T5 fifth generation transporter series, the Caravelle continues to be as versatile and difficult to pin down as ever. The bottom line is whether you see it as a smart minibus, uh, an executive MPV or some kind of lifestyle vehicle in the mould of Volkswagen's classic camper vans, this model's unique selling point is space. There just aren't many vehicles of any kind that can seat six to seven in this kind of comfort and take such a significant amount of luggage along for the ride. This kind of capability isn't inexpensive, of course, especially in comparison to some mainstream rivals. But cheaper alternatives lack not only Wolfsburg's legendary heritage in this sector, but also the classy feel, bulletproof build and solid residuals of the Volkswagen badge. It's a strong investment. You'll need to be part of a big family or a very mobile business in order to fully justify caravel ownership, of course. But if you can, then a conquest of space can begin very comfortably at the wheel of one of these.